Abelosaurs were a large group of successful, short-skulled, tiny-armed theropod dinosaurs that thrived throughout Cretaceous South America. With many other examples across the Gondwanan continents, North Africa, Madagascar, and India. You are likely most familiar with their biggest known member, Carnotaurus, the meat-eating bull. However, there were many more, and more are found all the time. Let's meet the latest member, a critter that shared the ecosystem with Carnotaurus itself. All the way back in 2015, National Geographic explorer and paleontologist Diego Pohl and colleagues came upon a small sharp claw sticking out of rocks that belonged to a layer of rock called La Colonia Formation that was outcropping in the Chubut province of Argentina. Pohl and friends found this claw as part of a joint project between the Egidio Ferruglio Paleontological Museum, the Bernardino Rivadavia Argentine Museum of Natural Sciences, the Felix Azara Foundation, and the National University of Rio Negro to get a better understanding of life right before the Cretaceous mass extinction event, as there is a lot of info from North America, but very little from anywhere else. After the team found the claw, they returned some time later to see if there was more to this find than just a couple pieces. Diego stated, We found there was a concretion just below the surface where all these bones were coming from. When they had uncovered the specimen, they were surprised to find a relatively complete skeleton of a theropod dinosaur. After excavating, field preparing, bringing the specimens back to the Egidio Ferruglio Paleontological Museum, and further preparing what they had collected, they found they had many skull pieces, plus pretty much the entire hip and trunk area, plus some tailbones. Pohl continues, When we prepared the concretion at the lab, we found the entire back end of the animal was preserved in perfect articulation. Articulation means all the bones of the skeleton were in the same place they were when the animal died. I cannot quite say they are connected because the bones connected with one another via tissues like cartilage. Once all of the bones were analyzed for any unique traits called autopomorphies and they could compare those traits with other dinosaurs, the team, which consisted of Diego Pol, Mattia Antonio Baiano, Ignacio Cerda, David Cherney, Fernando Novas, and Michael Pittman, published their find as a new dinosaur in the journal Cladistics. They gave the new critter the name Coleken Inakasheli, with the genus name in honor of the Daoshen language spoken by the fine folks of central Patagonia. Coleken means coming from clay and water. The species name honors Inakashel, who was one of the last chiefs of the Tewelchis people. He helped to resist Argentina's conquest of the desert military campaign, eventually dying to their hands. Colican, specimen MPEF PV10826, is specifically composed of the right upper jaw, a chunk of the left upper jaw, bits of the nasal bones, part of the postorbital bone, both squamosal bones from the back and top of the head, bits of both frontal bones of the top of the noggin, bits of the parietal bones that come from the very back of the top of the skull, a fragmentary atlas bone, which is the first vertebra that connects the head to the neck plus backbones 5 to 12, a complete pelvis and pelvic vertebra 1 to 5, plus three tail vertebrae and much of the legs. The team did an histological and phylogenetic analysis of the coliken bones. Histology is the study of microscopic tissues in bone, so to do this analysis, they took a slice of the long part of the limb bone and polished it down to a super fine thickness before mounting it on a microscope slide and observing it under the microscope with different types of light. This analysis found the Coliken individual was just a subadult of at least six years of age when it died. It had not yet reached skeletal nor sexual maturity, but considering its size and lack of the usual skeletally immature traits, they felt confident enough that it would not mess up their phylogenetic analysis. You see, sometimes dinosaur specimens are so young that their features would make the animal appear more primitive than it actually was, messing up the conclusions. 
When the international team of authors tallied up all of Golikin's traits and placed them into the phylogenetic software of their choice, in this case TNT version 1.6, they found that it placed most likely within a polytomy of abelisaurid theropods that belonged to the Carnotaurini group, which also includes Niebla, Acosaurus, and Carnotaurus. A polytomy is simply a grouping of critters that seem closely related but may be more or less related to one another when more data is included. But if more fossil taxa are found to be more closely related to any of them, they may all move around again to better illustrate a natural grouping or evolutionary trend. This means that Golaken belongs to the last and most advanced group of abelosaurs to evolve right before the mass extinction. As a whole, Colaken didn't appear very unique. However, Carnotaurus really is stiff competition. Based on the skull material found and with all its missing bits filled in with close relatives, Colaken seemed to be missing any brow horns or crests. This is one of the major features that sets it apart from Carnotaurus, which had a pair of out and downward pointing brow horns. This even led to the hypothesis that maybe Colican is just a female Carnotaurus, but the authors were able to confidently reject this hypothesis because there are simply not enough specimens of either Colican or Carnotaurus to know. Plus, no medullary bone has been uncovered from either of them. Another possibility is that it was a juvenile Carnotaurus. However, this can be rejected as well because its skull is at a growth stage that should look a bit more like the one known adult Carnotaurus, yet it's quite different. What is known of the eye sockets and fusion of the bones suggests they were not big enough or unfused enough for the animal to have been a very young individual. In other words, it really ought to look more like a Carnotaurus at its age if it were a young Carnotaurus. Aside from the head, Colican seems not to have strayed much from the generalized abelosaur body plan, with a thick short torso, big broad hips, and medium length hind limbs for bounding across the Patagonian forests and floodplains. Now that we know what this thing is, how about a size? Real quick, let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to get a good visual comparison. With the help of math formulas and comparisons to other abelosaurs, Colican has been estimated to have been around 5 meters, 16 feet in length when it was alive. The ecosystem was in dire need of small and medium sized predators, and Colican fits the bill. Thanks, Mr. Man. Something that this cola can help the author team establish is the rate at which ceratosaurs evolved. The abelosaur group belonged to the greater ceratosauria, which also included the noosaurs, elaphrosaurs, and ceratosaurs. Based on when and where these dinosaurs appeared, the authors show that the majority of the major evolutionary changes across the group occurred during the mid to late Jurassic epochs. Obviously, everything evolves all the time, but there were a lot less dramatic changes towards the end of the Cretaceous when all the major groups of ceratosaurs had already been kicking around for tens of millions of years. The only ones left were the abelosaurs and noosaurs, and only in certain parts of the world. What this means in the greater context of paleobiodiversity remains to be seen. Maybe more ceratosaur groups will be found to prove this wrong. Now that we know how these things evolved, let's take a gander at the world of Colican. Colican comes from the La Colonia Formation, which has been dated to the Maastrichtian Age of the Late Cretaceous Epoch, around 70 to 66 million years ago. This means the critters found within the rock layer were likely around for the space rock apocalypse. When Colican was alive, the area that is now arid and shrubby was lush and flat. The sediments that released the bones of Colican would have been laid down by a brackish to freshwater estuary system. The region in time would have had coastal plains, beaches, and shallow sea, plus tidal flats. What you see in prehistoric planet may have been where many of the giant dinosaurs spent much of their time, but the best preserved remains ended up closer to sea. Along with Colican and the famous Carnotaurus were an unnamed ankylosaur similar to Stegoros, an unnamed hadrosaur similar to the critosaurs, unknown titanosaurs, and the tiny titanosaur recently named Titanomachia. There was the madstoid snake Alamitophis, plus Gondwanatherian multituberculate and meridiolestin mammals, 
an antiornithine birds, a handful of plesiosaurs, and some turtles. Despite this list of critters, fossils from this time and place are still relatively rare, but the discovery of Colican has helped experts get a better sense of where to look for more fossils. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.